Hello everybody, my name is Bob, and this is my orbital maneuver rendezvous and docking tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to um, uh, change your orbital inclination, do orbital maneuvers, uh, how to rendezvous with a target like a, another spacecraft or a space station, uh, and uh, how to do the final steps that you need to, in order to get close enough to the spacecraft to dock with it. Uh, now, uh, there are some very good tools uh, that KSP has now uh, for doing uh, uh, rendezvous uh, maneuvers. Uh, the thing is, is that uh, you're not going to make the most use of them unless you understand the principles behind them. Uh, also, you may find yourself in a situation, uh, say you're trying to come back from the moon or from Duna or from another planet, where you don't have the luxury of spending a lot of fuel in a wasteful maneuver. Uh, so you need to understand the underlying principles of these maneuvers uh, so that you can make the best use of your fuel. Uh, so uh, first up is uh, orbital maneuvers. I already have a uh, spacecraft in orbit. Saved. We already have a Jebediah uh, in orbit in the wind boat too, uh, and it's at a slightly strange uh, angle. I did that on purpose so that I could show you how to do um, uh, inclination changes uh, in orbit. Uh, and uh, we're going to launch another spacecraft up uh, and uh, rendezvous with it, uh, and uh, we'll take it from there. Uh, let me show you the rocket we're using. This is the um, uh, uh, the one we, uh, we used in the last tutorial. Um, see I did add a couple little things on it I'll show you <coughs> excuse me okay what I changed on on it is um, um, I put a, a robotic brain on the uh, booster the core booster itself uh, and also a gyroscopic uh, SAS module uh, a gyroscopic SAS module is a way that you can uh, try to control your atti the attitude of your spacecraft uh, it doesn't use fuel but it's also not very strong uh, so it's only really for relatively light spacecraft or situations where you don't have to uh, do any kind of major changes very fast. Uh, and I put some batteries on it because the robot brains won't work without power and some solar panels. Uh, but basically it's pretty much the same same spacecraft we used uh, last time. Uh, we'll go ahead and launch it. Let me check my staging. Alrighty. Okay, looking pretty good. Uh, now I did set up an action group uh, for um, uh, turning these uh, little engines on and off. Uh, I did that because um, while it's good, to, they're good to have. You need a little extra thrust. Uh, they're also not very efficient, so they're a little bit wasteful. Uh, and so once you're done with the heavy lifting part of um, getting to orbit uh, and just kind of finishing up your orbit, you can turn those off, uh, and you won't waste uh, as much fuel. So uh, uh, if you have to uh, bring all your, you have to bring all your fuel that you're using in space uh, up from carbon. Let's say if you're going to the moon or whatever, uh, and so um, uh, not wasting fuel uh, is a good thing. And it's even more of a good thing when you're going to the planets. So, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> okay, this is looking good. Uh, let's get it launched. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, rocket uh, with the one. Okay. And we got Bill. Bill in there. He's not a particularly happy astronaut, but. Oh well. We got our throttle to the maximum, our SAS on. <coughs> now, let's look at our map. Uh, okay, well, first of all, that's at a real funky angle. Uh, I'm not going to try to match that angle when I take off uh, for a number of reasons, one of which is I'm trying to uh, show you what you would do. Let's say uh, you've got a, a rocket in the moon and it's stranded there, or a, a, a rocket uh, in lunar orbit is stranded there. Uh, and um, you can't necessarily predict ahead of time whether you're going to get there just a perfect time to uh, rendezvous with it or whether you'll have to 
uh, do some uh, changes. Uh, so what I'm trying to simulate here is uh, what you would do if you're going to rendezvous with a target that isn't already set up for you all nice and pretty. I was going to set up this uh, rocket all nice and pretty to rendezvous with this one. I would uh, launch when it's about that rock. This rocket's about here, uh, and then, then I would very neatly catch up to it. Uh, but uh, not only uh, I'm not going to wait till then. I'm also it's also at a w weird angle, so it'll give us an opportunity to, to uh, test out our inclination changes, which are an important thing that you need to uh, know about um, when you're trying to catch up with another uh, spacecraft. Uh, one of the things that you have to the first thing you have to adjust is your inclination. What is the angle of the, the the target as versus what your angle is. And you need to change your angle to match up with the ang angle of the target. Uh, second thing you have to be thinking about is um, is it behind you? Is it ahead of you? Or is it just going in the wrong direction altogether? Uh, this this we're, this one is going this way and we're going to be launching that way too. Let's suppose um, that it was going the other way. And I had, and I, for whatever reason, I had to come into the, say I was going to a uh, the moon to rescue an astronaut, and I came in the wrong way. So they're going at opposite directions. I would have to do an inclination change all the way around to where I was now going the same direction. I really have to do that first before I do anything else. Uh, so uh, inclination changes, getting at the same angle as your target, is sort of the first thing you have to worry about. Second thing is, uh, is it uh, ahead of you or is it behind you? Uh, now, one of the hardest things to uh, <coughs> get your head around, uh, first off, uh, when you first start, is okay. Let's say, uh, let's say this spacecraft was out here and this spacecraft was uh, there, and I'm trying to get this spacecraft to catch up with this one. Uh, now, you you would think, uh, well, I just step on the gas, I speed up, and I will catch up with that spacecraft. Uh, that's actually the reverse of what you do, uh, because if you're at a low orbit. You're going around the planet faster, or you're, you're, you uh, you make a revolution of the planet faster than if you're further out. If you step on the gas here, it's going to put you in a a higher orbit, and you're going to revolve around the planet more slowly, and so you will actually fall behind your target instead of catching up with it. So if the if the the target is um, uh, behind you, you want to get into a higher orbit to let it catch up. Uh, if it's in front of you, you want to get yourself into a lower, or lower orbit so that you can catch up with it. Uh, it's kind of counterintuitive at first. And it makes sense when you think about it, but at first it's kind of counterintuitive. Uh, so we're going to go ahead, and, even though it's not really in a perfect position right now, uh, it would be if it was about right here. We're just going to go ahead and launch anyway so, so we can have a, a test of our um, catching up or uh, to the spacecraft or having it catch up to us. So, three, two, one, go. Okay, as before, uh, when we get to um, uh, about 13,000 meters, uh, we're going to uh, do our gravity turn. Uh, it's not really necessarily a magic number, 13,000 meters, uh, but you want to be uh, doing your gravity turn at an altitude where you uh, have a little bit less, less air to, to fight against. Um, and you want to get it done soon enough to where uh, you're not having to catch up all that horizontal velocity all at once. So 13,000. Let's tilt it over. So 13,000 is sort of a good general number for launching from Kerbin. Now, let's say if you were launching from the moon, uh, you don't need to wait that long to do your gravity turn. Uh, you matter of fact, um, the, Apollo, the Apollo spacecraft, the lunar module, uh, you can, uh, when uh, they, they filmed the lunar module taking off from uh, the surface, you could see uh, that it was uh, that did its gravity turn uh, fairly well straight away. Okay, we're climbing up pretty good here. 
uh, because it doesn't have any air, uh, and so it doesn't have to fight against the air to um, uh, to get going. Uh, so if you're launching off of, from a body other than Kerbin, you can start your gravity turn. If it's a vacuum, uh, like the moon is, uh, you can start your gravity turn essentially immediately. Okay. We're going to to stop that off at uh, 70,000 meters uh, just for starts, starters, just so that we can get to orbit. Got about one minute left before we reach our apoapsis. Now we're going to want us to, to start off, uh, start a burn here at about uh, t minus. Uh, what is it? T minus uh, forty-five. Uh, the the less uh, you've gotten your orbit stre stretched out, uh, the more you have to worry about getting started ahead of time. Uh, now, when your orbit is almost complete, uh, you can uh, do your burn. Practically at like you know five minutes till uh, till apoapsis, but you do want to always keep your apoapsis in front of you uh, instead of having it uh, having it go 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 back behind you. I guess if it goes back behind you, you might not get to orbit. <coughs> and uh, that's something that we dealt with in the, uh, the previous tutorial. Uh, so you have two uh, two factors you have to worry about here. Uh, first is uh, the the closer you can do your burn to the apoapsis, all things being equal, uh, the better because it, you're you're going more in a, in a straight line. The uh, more the thrust is uh, directed towards horizontal motion, but uh, you don't want your apoapsis to get behind you either. Uh, so um, you have to balance those two factors um, because uh, if you get your apoapsis behind you. Uh, then, uh, then basically your periapsis is, is not going to not going to be uh, high enough to get you above the, the atmosphere. Uh, so that's uh, now. See, I've got I got the orbit fairly well stretched out here. I can uh, pretty much um, wait till very close to uh, to uh, the apoapsis to do the do the burn to finish up my orbit here, like that. And I can use my action key to shut off these engines down because I don't need them. And they're just waste of fuel. The other engine is much more efficient, so we'll use just that one. Because right now we don't need that extra power. We need very little power to finish up this orbit. And because that's true, um, we can wait to do our burn here until we're almost at the apoapsis. Uh, 72 and 74. That's very close. Uh, we'll go ahead and um, <coughs> finish it out just a little bit, just for the sake of neatness. Uh, now we're in a 73 by 74 uh, kilometer or orbit, so that's uh, that's pretty good shoot. Okay, now as you'll notice, of course, uh, the inclination of our target uh, is uh, totally different from the inclination we have here. Uh, so um, we're very close to uh, that that node there, so where the point at which the two orbits intersect. So. Um, I'm going to kind of show you what we would need to do. Uh, this, uh, in this case, uh, you want to think, be thinking about the the edge. Of, you want to do your maneuver at the intersection. Uh, you want to think about where where your what your where your orbit is out here. 
uh, you know, at a uh, right angle to the to that note. Uh, so in this case, uh, this is north of this. Uh, uh, yeah. So you will you want to you you would want to do a burn uh, towards the south, uh, and you want to do that burn uh, in between uh, your uh, apoapsis and your periapsis. So you you in this case you would do the burn about like. There, which is almost exactly 180 degrees. <coughs> um, now the reason why you want want to have you do it between your uh, uh, your prograde and uh, retrograde indicators uh, here uh, is because uh, so, you're not trying to increase your size of your orbit or decrease it. You're trying to change its angle. Uh, so, let's say if we didn't have the navigational aids that we have, that's how you would do a um, uh, a inclination change. Uh, but we're going to actually do our inclination change. Uh, over here. Uh, so, um, in this case, uh, uh, the, the orbit, the, the the edge of the orbit over here. We're looking at this. Uh, you could go out to sort of the, the the go to a what what's the correct word for that? Uh, go to the halfway halfway around point and see where your orbit is, and that's how you judge whether you need to go north or south. In this case. Uh, that the, the orbit is uh, north of us, uh, so you'll want to you would you would want to burn exactly <coughs> the opposite way, which would be north. And uh, it used to be we didn't have all the neat uh, uh, tools we had for uh, for doing inclination changes, and I'll show you how to do those use those tools in a minute. Uh, we didn't have all those neat tools, so uh, we had to do it this way. Basically, just by looking to see which way, whether we need to go uh, north or south here, uh, and uh, then also making sure that we're in between our pro our um, our prograde and retrograde indicators. So in this case, that would be dead north. Uh, we would go up. Um, if I was going to do this. I would I would do this. Yeah, see, so see the blue blue indicator here. That's right where I was pointing. Uh, so that's um, that's an indication of what direction I would have to go in order to do the burn. We're not going to do that right now. So we need to uh, set our target as our target. Uh, it can be kind of difficult or fiddly to uh, to do it depending on how many orbits you have here. Uh, but you should uh, be able to just um, in a perfect world. Uh, which is not a perfect world, <laughs> should be able to um, click on it and say set as target. Uh, now what that will do is uh, after you do your inclination change, it'll show you wh where your um, uh, where your closest approaches are uh, as far as where you are now. Uh, now, you see, now you, this is this is that would be in this case the closest approach, uh, but you see there's still quite a quite a long distance. It's a separation of uh, 554 kilometers between these two points, so you'd have to bring those two points together. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Uh, first thing we have to do is the inclination change, and that's what you always would do first if you're trying to uh, rendezvous uh, with the target. Is get to be on uh, the same orbital path uh, as your target. Uh, so if your target's on some kind of funky angled orbit, you have to get on a funky angled orbit too uh, in, order, in order to have a rendezvous. Also, the, these um, maneuver things, once you set them up, you can move them around uh, so that you can sort of fine tune where exactly you're doing the uh, maneuver. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and uh, we're already set up uh, pointing in the right direction here. Uh, the, the blue indicator shows you uh, what direction you need to be pointed for this maneuver, for whatever your next maneuver is coming up. So let's go ahead and uh, fast forward a bit. Now this is only the first step in doing uh, a run rendezvous. Uh, the, uh, we have to do other things to uh, 
get uh, aligned as far as the distance between here and here, the horizontal distance. We have to do other things to assist with that. Uh, but right now, all we're worried about is getting our orbit on the same angle, uh, same inclination as uh, Jebediah's orbit over here. Okay. Um, also, I want to show you, show you something about the uh, when you set up a, a maneuver uh, by right-clicking on the, your path of your spacecraft, uh, you get these indicators here. It shows you how much energy you're going to need for the uh, uh, maneuver. Uh, it's a, it's a, a sort of a bar that feeds down as you uh, put thrust into your maneuver. It'll show you how long you have to do the burn uh, and when when you're actually going to get to the point where the maneuver is. Uh, now, um, uh, let's say the, the, the burn is here, here is 10 seconds. Uh, well, you don't want to do the burn at the node. In this case, you'd want to do the, ner the, the, the burn about 5 seconds before you get there. Uh, so you'd have 5 seconds to burn before you get to the node and 5 seconds after. Uh, that's just, uh, usually it doesn't matter that much, but um, that's just to make sure that your, your force of your burn is directed as, as closely as possible. Uh, in the direction that you want it to be directed and at the time you want it, want it to be happening. Uh, so we got about a minute before the burn. Uh, we're we're going to be uh, burning at um, uh, burning off uh, 248 meters a second. Uh, we're going to be applying 248 meters a second of thrust, uh, which uh, is not small. Now generally speaking, inclination changes uh, do use a fair amount of fuel, uh, so uh, you want to minimize them by mostly using equatorial orbits, unless you have reason not to. Um, but uh, if you if you need to do the do a inclination change, uh, just just be aware that that generally speaking they they do cost a reasonable amount of fuel, depending on how far the the difference is between your orbit and the target orbit. Okay, we're going to be at the no node in about uh, 12 seconds. I'm going to wait until we're about about uh, six or seven, you know, like that, and I'm going to throttle up. All right, when that goes down to to zero, uh, that's when you want to stop your or close to zero. Uh, that's when you want to stop your burn. Now this indicator says ascending node. Uh, that indicates uh, what the difference is, where where the uh, intersection of your orbit and their orbit is. So that's something you want to be aware of. That's that's the point at which you're going to want to do your uh, inclination change, which is what we did here. Uh, right now it's saying um, it's. Uh, 0.1 degrees difference. Uh, it's not perfect. Ideally, you want to have 0, 0.0 degrees difference. Uh, that means no difference. Uh, but in this case, it's not really going to matter that all that terribly much. Uh, that that degree of difference is not a big deal. But ideally, you want this to be saying that there there's no difference between your your um, angle of your orbit and the angle of their orbit. Okay. Now you see uh, the what our next closest intersection is is right here. That's where the target will be, and that's where we'll be. Well, it's not very close, and they're not very close together. Uh, now, you could simply do a, a maneuver here. Let's, let's try this. Add a maneuver, uh, and um, um, try to burn prograde uh, for a bit uh, until you get them lined up like that. So here, we got a maneuver that's pretty close, so separation of 5.6 kilometers. Um, that may not necessarily be the most efficient way of doing it, though. Uh, now we're gonna we, we would be burning out. It's not it's not too it, too inefficient in this case, um, but it's not very efficient either. Uh, if if there was a great difference between um, the position of the, our other spacecraft and this spacecraft, what we would probably want to do is um, actually just get to a slightly larger orbit, a slightly higher altitude orbit, and let them catch up. So we'll. Uh, just burn out a tad like this, uh, and then when we get over here, we'll do the same thing to to, to widen our orbit. Uh, that way, we don't have to waste quite as much fuel 
uh, to get an intersection. Now in this case it really wouldn't make that much difference because we're relatively close together. Uh, we could simply just burn all the way out and forget about it. Uh, but if you're in a situation where you need to conserve fuel, uh, it can be um, uh, more fuel efficient to just get to a slightly different altitude uh, and wait for them. Um, and if you're in a situation like coming back from the moon or something uh, where you need to do an encounter with a fuel tank or whatever, uh, the, that difference could make a difference. Uh, so uh, you want to try to do all your maneuvers as fuel efficiently as you can within reason. Uh, this might not be that much more efficient than just going out, uh, but we'll see. And again, if you're going the same direction, uh, that is, uh, and they're behind you. Uh, you want to get to. You want to speed up. Uh, in, a, in, in essence, it, it's kind of counterintuitive. You think you'd want to break, but you actually want to speed up, get to a higher orbit, uh, let them catch up with you. Uh, if if uh, they're ahead of you, uh, you want to get to a lower orbit, uh, and then you'll catch up with them. Um, the only problem here is we don't have a whole lot of. If, if I was if I was here and I was trying to catch up to. Uh, to, to Bill over here, uh, where I'm, I'm at a fairly low altitude, I don't have a whole lot of altitude to work with here, so that's something you have to be aware of. Uh, but uh, generally speaking, um, if if a target is uh, going, you're going the same direction, and the target is ahead of you, uh, you want to go lower and catch up with them because it'll take less time for you to orbit the planet. Uh, and if they're um, behind you, you want to get higher and let them catch up. Okay, let's go ahead and speed up and get to our maneuver. Okay, this uh, this um, this maneuver costs us uh, twenty by about twenty five meters a second. Uh, let me do an uh, and so it'll it'll probably cost the same thing to uh, approximately the same thing to get the orbit stretched out all the way. Uh, let's go ahead and do an experiment. So that's uh, fifty meters a second. Let's do an experiment right quick and see how much we'd have to spend if we wanted to get the maneuver straight away, get the uh, uh, get the encounter straight away. Uh, that's uh, 93 meters a second, so that's not a great difference. Uh, it is a difference, and depending on how much you're, how much fuel you have, that can make a big difference. Um, 90 meters a second as versus. 50 meters a second to just get to a slightly higher orbit and wait for a second. Or wait for a few, wait a few orbits for them to catch up. So uh, to to do it all at once in this case is uh, less fuel efficient uh, than to just get to a slightly higher orbit and wait for a little bit. And we could probably get to a uh, even lower orbit, uh, lower lower orbital difference if we don't mind waiting lo uh, longer. Okay. So we're gonna just pop out a little bit. Okay, we'll, we'll do we'll do 16 uh, uh, meters second um, burn. Yeah, 20. Oh yeah, close enough. Uh, so um, uh, really, uh, if I if I do it this way, I am using. I can use maybe half as much fuel, uh, which may not matter here, but it may matter somewhere. It may, be, may matter if you're uh, trying to uh, do a rendezvous at the moon and then get home on a reasonable fuel budget. So that's a, you know, how to do a maneuver is smarter because they have this, this uh, system, the, these tools here, uh, they're great tools. Uh, they won't tell you how to do the burns smarter. Uh, you have to, uh, to uh, do that yourself. And really it's a, simply a matter of making sure on, you're on the right inclination uh, and uh, knowing to uh, uh, get to a higher orbit if they're behind you or to a lower orbit if they're ahead. Okay. Now we got to get lined up on our uh, blue indicator which shows us where Where we're supposed to do a burn, and we, we, in this case, we uh, do our burn almost directly at our uh, prograde indicator. A uh, prograde again is the indicator that shows you the direction you're traveling in. Okay, three, two, one. Okay. 
go ahead and close out that encounter. And again, to get the get these indicators that show you where your intersects are, you have to uh, right click on the um, on the uh, ship or, or station or whatever that you're wanting to to uh, rendezvous with. Uh, which can be a little fiddly, like I said. Oh, it's not right click; it's just plant, just a regular left click. Uh, but uh, sometimes you have you have other orbits and stuff in the way. Kind of kind of can take. Uh, a second to uh, to get it set as your target, or you can it would take a little just a little little uh, fidgety, put it that way. So I unset target, now set as target. Okay. Uh, so you you left click on it, the the, the target, the, the icon for the uh, target, uh, if you want to uh, have it indicate the orbit and uh, where your closest encounter is. Uh, set it as target, in other words. Okay. Let's go ahead and. Uh, head out to our apoapsis. And we'll enlarge the orbit on the other side. And now doing this... Um, oh, doing this uh, encounter more efficiently does take longer. Uh, Kerbals don't really need air apparently, uh, so you don't really have to worry about running out of air consumables and stuff. So, uh, if your main concern is fuel economy, uh, it makes a lot more sense to do your encounter uh, this way rather than having to do it trying to do it all at once. Okay, we'll do another prograde burn just to uh, get that stretched out a little bit. Yeah, it should be good enough. Uh, now, when you see that we start this this thing starts catching up with us, we'll have to at least lower at least one side of our orbit um, uh, so that we'll be able to have the encounter. Uh, for right now, we'll just uh, time compress, let these these guys catch up with us. And again, um, it doesn't. It uh, for this this sort of just an orbital maneuver. Uh, I could have just gone straight out and done it. Uh, I'm trying to show you how you would do it if you're somewhere besides Kerbin, or if you have a, a limited amount of fuel. Now you may have noticed that these two indicators just got just got a little bit closer there. Uh, this would be the most efficient way of doing it, not not the most time-effective way of doing it. Uh, and um, uh, these sort of encounters uh, in, in real life, um, uh, it used to at least uh, take the Soyuz uh, going to the station, the International Space Station, it used to take them uh, four days to catch up. Now they've found a way to cut that down. See how that, how that just moved closer? Uh, the, the, diff uh, the diff distance between these two is diminishing as we go around because I'm at a higher orbit. It means I go around the I do a, one revolution of the of the planet uh, slower, uh, and uh, he's in a lower orbit, which means he he's on the inside track, as it were. If you can imagine like a racetrack, uh, he's on the inside track and he's moving faster. Again, in, in a lot of situations, it wouldn't make sense to do the do it this uh, very fuel efficient. Uh, see how that jumped closer there. Uh, this very fuel efficient way, um, but uh, I'm I'm trying to show you how to do it in a situation where you d don't have the fuel to, to burn, uh, where you don't really want to be spending the, the fuel if you can if you can't help it. Okay, we're getting kind of close now. I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, uh, Lower my port periapsis to where it's a little bit closer to where uh, their their periapsis is, because uh, I don't want them to shoot under, underneath me.
Uh, wrong way. I'm not using RCS fuel because I've got enough uh, gyroscopic SAS here to uh, to really do the job fairly well. So I'm not not needing to use the RCS at all. Okay, I'm pointed to retrograde now. That's uh, uh, opposite the direction of my travel. Uh, so I'm going to try to bring my periapsis uh, down. i got to kind of be careful to see where I'm going here. And that's pretty close, so... <clears throat> also, you can change... Um, um, which right now I'm looking at, at my, my spacecraft, right? You can change your focus um, by hitting the tab key. Uh, so I wanted to, to change the focus to uh, the planet Kerbin so I can get a better idea of where these orbits are. Uh, so I can look at this a little bit better. Uh, so uh, in order to get um, back uh, uh, to um, focusing on my spacecraft, what I did is I hit shift tab to uh, change back. Uh, so tab advances to the next target. Uh, shift tab goes back. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, time compress. I suppose I should also mention uh, just this sort of general, general maneuvering fact that that if you want your, obviously if you want your uh, orbit to um, uh, get larger, uh, you want to uh, do a burn in the direction of your travel. In other words, prograde, like this. Uh, and if you want to make your orbit smaller, you burn record retrograde. Now you have to do that at both both ends of your orbit. Uh, so, for instance, here, uh, if I wanted to make my apoapsis uh, smaller, I would burn at my periapsis. Uh, that's sort of a, a basic basic uh, fact of uh, in, uh, doing orbital maneuvers, but I figure it, it probably should mention it because it could be somebody who's confused about that. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and see if I can set up my encounter now. And in fact, it looks like I just have to do a very small burn, and we are. Ah, uh, damn it. Uh, these, these things can be a little fiddly. Uh, let's say I just have to do a very small burn. Uh, and we have an encounter. Uh, in this case, the uh, separation is two kilometers, which is quite close. Uh, you can get it even closer if you want to. Um, okay. Now let's get, get um, pointed in the right direction, and we'll get ready to do our... Uh, burn to do the encounter, <coughs> which will be in uh, nine seconds. All right. Uh, what happened there? No, that beats the hell out of me. <laughs> it was showing us as having having an encounter there, but then it decided not to. Okay, it's all good. All right, that's just that's just weird because I I set up a maneuver. I didn't put anything here. See, I say add maneuver. It says that I'm. Having, a, having an encounter when I'm obviously not. Okay.
Uh, let's go ahead and bring our uh, apoapsis down just a tad. I don't want it to, to shoot underneath me. Uh, for which I need to be pointed retrograde. Oh, you know, I think he was showing me the encounter after we get past here. That's what I think was happening. So let me hold off until we're past this. Okay, yeah, so now it's, now it's showing uh, that when I come this way again, there'll be an encounter. Okay, so I don't have to adjust anything. Okay, well, let's go ahead and time compress. Under uh, what, what acceleration am I under? Oh, it's because I've got SAS on. It sometimes thinks that because you have SAS on, you're accelerating when you're not. Okay, so we'll pop around. And by the time we come around here, we'll be ready for our encounter. Uh, if you look here, uh, the encounter icons uh, show you uh, where, where, where your closest approach is and where the, the other ship will be at the time of that closest approach. Uh, so in this case, um, it's intersect 1, separation uh, 1.5 kilometers, which is quite close. Certainly close enough for to do our final maneuverings. Uh, and it says target position as in, at intersect 1. Uh, is uh, that's, that's where the ship will be, which is pretty much the same place. Which is what you want if you want to have an encounter. Uh, okay, I'm going to take a short break. I'll be right back. Okay, to uh, recap what we've done uh, thus far, because I feel like my explanation may have been slightly confused. Um, first thing you do when you want to rendezvous with something, change the inclination of your orbit to match the inclination of their orbit. Uh, and they'll, they'll, how close you are will be indicated if you put your pointer over one of these ascending or descending node indicators. That's a descending node indicator. It'll show you how many degrees you're off. In this case, I'm about 0.1 degrees, so that's not a big deal. So first thing is change your inclination to match the inclination of your target. That's my target. Second thing is you have to arrange to have uh, either the, that ship, uh, your target, catch up to you or for you to catch up to them. And so you'd be in the same area of the orbit. That's uh, so what we've done now, and we have an encounter right here. So let's go ahead and... Uh, get over to it. Now, uh, one thing to bear in mind is, okay, so we, so we come up to our encounter here. Uh, now, if I just leave things alone, don't do anything, eventually we'll get apart again. I'll go out here, it'll go there, and we'll start getting further and further apart. Uh, so when we get to our encounter, we have to do things to make sure that we're going to stay in close proximity to each other, and then ultimately dock. So... Let's go ahead and time compress so that we're a little closer. Also notice down here, this indicator has changed to say target. Now let's say if you're if you're in close proximity to another ship, but you're not trying to do a docking with it, you're trying to do an orbital maneuver, you can always click on this indicator to change it back to orbit. In this case, but we want to want to or surface. In this case, we wanted to stay at target because uh, we're going to go go ahead and do a rendezvous. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, time compress until we get up to our uh, rendezvous. Or get close to our rendezvous, actually. Uh, when you're right about here, we're going to want to start making changes to make sure that we stay in close proximity to the target ship. And you actually want to start making those changes uh, somewhat before you actually get to the closest, in, uh, closest approach. So right about here, we're going to start doing our maneuvers. Okay. Now in uh, he here, uh, you'll see we have our prograde and indi uh, retrograde indicators like before. Uh, in this case, however, uh, it the retrograde indicator indicates um, the direction we'll have to burn in order to cancel out the difference of in, in the velocity uh, between ourselves and the target. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get aimed uh, retrograde. In this case, it in indicates 
the direction that we need to burn to to, to close the distance to our target. Uh, and we'll start doing a very small burn. See this number goes down uh, 25 meters a second and, and, and decreasing. That indicates that the relative velocity between ourselves and the target is changing, is going down. So we want to go ahead and uh, get that zeroed out or something close. Get that down as close to zero as we can. We may have to do a little maneuvers. Alright, so now that's pretty close. Okay. So now there's relatively little um, relative difference, uh, relative velocity change, relative velocity diff difference between ourselves uh, and target. Uh, now you also want to notice uh, these little pur purple indicators. Uh, this indicator indicates that we'd be pointing in the direction away from the target. We'd be pointing away from the target here. And over here, it would indicate that we're pointing towards our target. This indicator here. So let's, uh, since we've sort of semi-zeroed out our difference in, uh, velo in uh, velocity between ourselves and the target spacecraft, we want to go ahead and point towards the target spacecraft and do a little burn towards it. I want to burn it till this prograde indicator starts getting kind of close to uh, to uh, this, to the direction of our target. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and switch to our uh, outdoor view. And let's see if we can find this bugger. Oh, he's right there. And he's about 5.3 kilometers away. Uh, now what I might do at this point, because uh, right now if I have to maneuver, um, I have, would have to move this entire spacecraft, including this, this core booster stage. I don't really want to do that, so I'm going to go ahead and decouple. Uh, and this has its own little brain, so it's going to, I'm going to be able to, later on if I so desire, uh, do orbit that or do whatever else I want to with that separately. Uh, but we want to, for our maneuvering, go ahead and uh, get rid of that dead weight. And at this range, uh, it's okay for us to go ahead and uh, uh, increase the um, the closing speed here. Oh, it might help if I turn the engine on. Okay, we're just gonna let it sit for a minute. Uh, let the distance between ourselves and the target spacecraft close up a little bit. Uh, now, when we start getting closer, ideally we want to have this uh, prograde indicator uh, lining up right with the direction of the uh, of the uh, space other other spacecraft, target spacecraft. Right now, it's kind of premature to worry about it, um, but uh, at some point, I am going to need to worry about that. Uh, we'll do a little time compression to kill some of the distance between ourselves and the other spacecraft. Okay, uh, now our, our, our di speed difference between ourselves and the other spacecraft kind of increasing a little bit. Let's go ahead and get pointed retrograde again. And kill a little bit of that off. That also helped get us lined up better on the uh, target. Okay, that should be okay for right now.
Okay, right now our prograde indicator is right there. Uh, and I want to do a little burn to kind of bring that closer. So what I'll do is I'll go to the... Okay, so uh, here's the direction of the travel. Here's the direction of uh, the prograde indicator. I'm going to go uh, out beyond that and uh, sort of push the prograde indicator closer to... Well, I think push it closer to the uh, direction of the uh, spacecraft. Uh, okay, well, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and kill off some more of that velocity. Because right now, this this thing, the prograde, the retrograde indicator is is close to the direction of. There we go. Okay, there we go. That's what I was looking for. See how that got close close there, but now it's just kind of going away. Uh, let's go ahead and kill that off a little more. Okay, well, it looks like this is going to be a good example of uh, uh, doing a rendezvous because it looks like it's going to be a little bit more problematic than I thought. Okay, and now see now how the prograde the prograde indicator is getting a little closer to the uh, actual direction of the spacecraft. That's what we want. Yeah, sometimes you have to kind of fiddle around to uh, to get that to happen. So. Yeah, actually it was starting to get away from us a little bit. So sometimes you don't have a perfect encounter and you have to uh, make adjustments. Okay, at this range, um, uh, going this fast, 18.7 meters a second relative uh, closing speed uh, is not a problem. Obviously, you don't want to be going that fast when you're right next to the spacecraft. Uh, one, you could ram into the spacecraft, and two, you could uh, actually um, miss the spacecraft and have it go shooting off in some random direction. Uh, for right now, it's not a big deal. All right, let's do a little time compression and see how it's uh, starting to work out here. Okay, I'm wanting to bring that prograde indicator uh, a little bit closer to the actual direction of the uh, spacecraft. So I'm burning in this direction uh, to achieve that. Okay, now I've got a relative difference of uh, 44.3 meters a second, which is uh, they're going pretty fast. Uh, I'm not going to worry about it just yet, but I will need to worry about it soon uh, because we're closing pretty fast. Yeah, and I, I need to worry about it now. <laughs> I need to kill off all that velocity right quick. 
Okay. Uh, like I said, this is a uh, somewhat of a problem problematic uh, docking. That's good. That that gives us uh, gives us some uh, gives us some uh, good lessons. Yeah, yeah, good lessons. Okay. Now I've killed off like almost all the blossoms. But I need to get my prograde indicator back on course uh, as far as being aligned with the direction of my direction to the spacecraft. Okay, and at this point, where is that bugger? Okay, it's real close. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn on my RCS. And I'll use our, whoop, RCS control. Well, I'll actually, no, I'll actually use the translation control, excuse me. Oh, whoa, okay, I'll tur turn on find control. And uh, use those to get it lined up better. Okay, now I'll just use a little forward translational motion to get uh, our speed back up to about a meter a second. Okay, here we go. Uh, and you also notice it's switched into docking mode, which not always is not always what you want. Uh, in fact, it may may never be what you want, uh, but that's uh, what we what we have at the moment. Okay, I'm using RCS to get this get the prograde indicator lined up on the uh, uh, on the uh, direction to the spacecraft. Uh, now, if you want to switch, if you want to stay in docking mode, you want to switch between uh, <coughs> translational controls and rotational controls, uh, you hit the space bar for that. So now it says rotation, ROT, and now it says LIN for linear. Uh, I'm not sure why they've done that. Uh, it seems to me that the staging controls are perfectly fine for that function, but whatever. Uh, that's a, it's, it's a feature of the program that you need to be aware of, especially if you start trying to do a maneuver and you can't maneuver because it's it's in linear instead of rotation. Okay, we're, 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 we're closing in here pretty good. Uh, about uh, 134 meters. Uh, let's slow up just a tad. Said so slow up just a tad. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to want to kind of pick our docking port. Uh, so, this only has one docking port, so it should be easy. I didn't bother getting rid of this stage here because this is our passive target that's just going to sit there. Uh, so I'm going to right click on the um, on the, the uh, docking port and click on set as target. Also, if you're uh, not having any trouble with doing a rotation without RCS, uh, turn your RCS off when you're doing rotation, uh, unless you're you can't rotate without it, because we're using up uh, RCS fuel. Although we haven't used up much. Again, that's uh, <coughs> part of the principle of only use RCS when nothing else will work. <laughs> Because uh, RCS uses up fuel, and you nothing worse than trying to do a, a docking maneuver and realize that you're out of RCS fuel. Because if that happens, you're pretty much not going to make it. You're not going to dock. Okay. But we had to struggle a little bit to get this rendezvous going. Uh, but hopefully, in the process, I'm, I, I showed you a little bit of. What you would do to try to correct that if things go start going south. Uh, in this case, I think we, we um, screwed up sort of the initial alignment stages of our uh, of our rendezvous and uh, had to make up for it. Okay, we're getting quite quite close now. Uh, lights are a good thing to have, especially if you're doing a uh, doing a rendezvous on the night side, or if the uh, if the ship is in shadow. Uh, it's a good thing to have. Uh, we're closing in about 0.6 meters a second, so that's uh, just just fine and dandy.
Uh, if you get within spitting distance, um, you need to get get it slowed down to about 0.1 or 0.2 meters a second. But we're not quite there yet. Okay, let's go ahead and break it a little bit. We're getting close. That might help if I turn the RCS on. Yes, it might. Oh, wrong way. As a as an instant, uh, one thing that's going to be very useful for to you is uh, the chase view. That's a very useful thing. Uh, okay, back up a little bit. You don't want to crash into your other spacecraft. Uh, so, so here I was looking at the spacecraft, trying to do a maneuver, and I, I went the wrong way uh, because I was looking at the wrong end of the spacecraft. <laughs> uh, so, um, getting in chase chase view sort of gets you behind the behind the spacecraft in a good uh, uh, good alignment here, um, and so that's what you want probably want to be in, in when you're docking. And again, it's locked me into linear mode. I have to hit the space bar to go back to uh, rotational mode. And I don't need RCS to rotate, at least not on this ship. So uh, I have that turned off. And there may be situations where you want to get um, everything all lined up nice and pretty. And uh, so that's what I'm doing here. I'm trying to get these uh, identical fuel tanks set up uh, to point in the right direction. And most of the time it won't matter. Yeah, but there might be some situation in which I'm, I'm still in rotation. That's the space bar to get back into translational control. Uh, there might be some situation where you want to have that all line, lined up nice and pretty, and so then you'll have to uh, rotate. Uh, why exactly they've done it this way, uh, I don't honestly know. Why they would, why, why it simply wouldn't be in staging mode all the time, I don't know. That's uh, a question for them, I guess. I don't know what possible benefit that that, uh, that that mode could have. Uh, okay. Really rather be in staging mode all the time, to be honest. Uh, you may find that uh, fine control um, is a good thing to use when you start getting uh, getting up close. And it switched me into staging for no fairly apparent reason, even though I don't really want it to be. Uh, sw switched me to docking mode, even though I don't really want it to be in docking mode, like ever. <laughs> but whatever, we'll, we'll work with it. Okay, now uh, we're looking at the side of the spacecraft. That will tell us uh, what our uh, height height difference is, what the, di what the difference in, is between us in this, this axis. Uh, so we're going to go down a little bit. You may find it uh, useful to kind of switch back and forth between looking at the side of the spacecraft and looking at the top. Uh, it'll, if you between the two of them, it'll, that'll that'll tell you what you need to know in order to get everything uh, all aligned in three dimensions. Okay, so we're getting uh, that all lined up. Good. Now we need to go forward a bit. And to the right a bit. Uh, and uh, while I, I really in, enjoy that uh, this aspect of the game, I can I can see how this would kind of make some people uh, give give them a little bit of vertigo because you're kind of all spinning around and meanwhile you're rotating the planet and, and all that. So I can understand how some people might actually get a little vertigo from this, uh, but uh, I find it uh, exciting. Uh, one problem also with being in um, uh, in uh, fine control, uh, using fine control instead of regular control, uh, it can be hard to see where where your uh, RCS ports are, are firing. Which, uh, in most cases, once you get, kind of get used to doing stuff, doesn't matter. But when you're first starting out, it's uh, it's helpful to be able to see where your RCS thrusters are burning, and you can't when you're in fine control. So that's a drawback of using fine control. Uh, 
Yeah, we're lining up very nicely. See, I'm switching back, back and forth between looking at the top of the spacecraft here and looking at the sign. Uh, between the two of them, that, that allows me to get it all lined up in three dimensions. I'm right, going to go down a little bit and back up a little bit, or decrease my rate of closure. Okay. Let's cancel that uh, out. Just a touch to the right. Cancel that out. Up a little bit. Up a little bit. Slow. Uh, these rock docking ports uh, have been known to rip off on occasion, so as gentle, gentle as you can make it is uh, is the is better. This looks like have it real easy, nice and easy. And boom, and we are docked. Jebediah and Bill, Jebediah smiling. Jebediah and Bill are uh, out there um, uh, docked together. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, have uh, Jebediah uh, EVA and uh, say hello to, uh, to Bill there. And, and unlike some of my uh, rockets, uh, it, opening the hatch doesn't fling them out into deep space. I've had a problem with uh, some of my rockets um, uh, accidentally throwing my astronauts uh, out into helplessly out into space. So, uh, uh, and the um, the controls for the jetpack are very similar to the controls um, for the um, uh, spacecraft. Are the translational controls for the spacecraft? Um, Metal I've set them up uh, up uh, slightly different on mine. So it's it's more intuitive to me because I, I sort of think of this as the head of the spacecraft and this is the feet and that's the way I've set it up uh, up uh, here. So he's there. He's uh he's having a little peeking in at uh, at uh, Bill. And they're having themselves a little uh, uh little uh, powwow through the window. Okay, and that's pretty much uh, what you need to know about uh, orbital maneuvers, uh, rendezvous, and docking. Uh, let's uh, go ahead and get him back to his own spacecraft. Uh, unfortunately, these are not uh, two-person spacecraft, so... Okay, sort of to uh, recap, uh, the sort of basics of, uh, of orbital maneuvers is first, if you're going to rendezvous with somebody, uh, you need to get on the same uh, orbital plane, the same orbital inclination. Uh, so the, the, if they're tilted off this way, you have to get tilted off that way too. Uh, second thing is, uh, if we want to change an orbit, uh, in order to... Uh, in order to get further out, of course, we would turn uh, prograde. This is the prograde indicator. Uh, so to make this orbit bigger, we'd have to uh, we would say we would, we would burn at the periapsis, uh, burn prograde at the periapsis, uh, and then to make it even in all sides, we'd have to burn again at the apoapsis uh, to uh, also pointing prograde uh, to make it a, a nice even circle. Uh, and the reverse. Uh, if we're going to uh, make our orbit smaller, uh, we need to uh, get pointed retrograde. That's our retrograde indicator right there. And typically you would um, uh, burn at one end of your orbit to make the other end go out or, or go in in this case, um, and uh, go to the other side of your orbit and do the same thing. Uh, so at, when, if you're doing a, a rendezvous, uh, after uh, you get your orbital inclination, the, the inclination of your orbit, uh, 
uh, tilted exactly the same way. So you notice this is kind of a tilted, it's not an equatorial orbit, this is a tilted orbit. Uh, so once you get your orbit tilted exactly the same way, uh, you have to get your two spacecraft to the same area of that orbit. Uh, very often you can uh, uh, just do a single maneuver, uh, click, click, uh, left click on your the line of your orbit and do add maneuver uh, and um, either uh, increase or decrease whatever and you can get, um, if you have your target selected, you can very often get a rendezvous uh, right away, but it may not be the most efficient thing to do. Um, you may need to, to, if you want to save fuel, um, the, the, the uh, rule for getting your orbits aligned is, uh, or your position in the orbit aligned is, if they're ahead of you, uh, you want to uh, have be in a lower orbit, so you'll catch up to them. Uh, if they're behind you, you want to be in a higher orbit, so they'll catch up to you. Uh, contrary to what your intuition may say, you, you don't speed up to get to a, a spacecraft ahead of you. You would actually slow down. So, for instance, if we're going to uh, say we set this as, tar as a target, uh, it's behind us. Um, in order to have it sort of catch up to us, uh, we would need to be at a higher, in a higher orbit. If it was ahead of us, we need to be in a lower, lower orbit to catch up to it. Uh, and again, you don't always don't need to do those kinds of orbital maneuvers. You may simply be able to uh, right click or click on a, your orbit and change things in such a way as you have an encounter. Uh, you can also move your encounter around, see if you get a more beneficial arrangement like this. Uh, but sometimes uh, doing it just in a one-shot deal is not the most efficient way to do it. So if you're worried about fuel efficiency, you may not want to do it this way. Uh, instead, you may want to get uh, uh, either slightly above or slightly below the target and either let them catch up to you or you to catch up to them. Uh, so that's our uh, orbital maneuver, uh, inclination change, uh, rendezvous, and docking tutorial. And there's our two spacecraft. Alrighty, uh, and uh, I think uh, for our next tutorial, uh, the third tutorial, I think we're going to do a uh, sort of a tutorial on how to get to the moon. Uh, so uh, Bill is screaming, stop it Bill, nothing to be alarmed about, everything's under control. <laughs> so until next time, hasta la vista.